everyone. My name is Taylor Davis. I am the livestock agent for Highlands County. Now we're going to talk about the anatomy and the structures of the female reproductive tract. So we're going to start our way working from the outside inward. So our first structure, you might actually be able to see it looking just looking at a cow. It's called the vulva. And the vulva provides extra protection to the vagina. And he, you also might notice that it becomes swollen and has a red coloration to it. Our next structure we're gonna dis discuss is called the vestibule. This is a common duct for urine in, fe in the fetus. It stimulates the male during copulation. You also might notice this big sac over to the side. This is known as the bladder. Coming back to the reproductive tract, we're going to discuss the vagina. And the vagina is located between the bladder and the cervix, so this area. It stimulates the male by temperature and it also is highly acidic to prevent bacterial growth. It has a 5.7 pH. Our next structure is known as the fornix vagina. And it is at the entry point of the cervix, right here. This, at the fornix vagina, is the site of semen deposit during natural mating. It also secretes mucus during estrus. Our next structure is called the cervix. This is also known as a landmark when manually palpating because it feels very different than any other structure in the reproductive tract. It's very sphincter-like, so in other words, it feels very similar to a chicken neck. It produces mucus during estrus and it is sealed right here during pregnancy to prevent any pathogens from entering the and harming the developing fetus. It also serves as a birth canal during parturition. A lot of times when you're checking cows, you might notice just from looking at a cow from the outside that it has some mucus coming out of her vulva, the area where she urinates. This is a sign that the cow or the heifer is in heat and that mucus is coming from the fornix vagina and the cervix. Our next structure we're going to discuss, it's two parts in one, is the uterine body, which is this area. But we also have two uterine horns. These are bicornate, meaning that there are two. And these structures make up the uterus. This is where semen is deposited during artificially inseminating. So when you are AIing, you will take your rod and manipulate it through the cervix. And at the very end of the cervix, in the uterine body, is where you deposit the semen. The function of the uterus is for embryo development and attachment of the embryo. Our next structures, there are two of them, and they are called the oviducts. And I'll have to show you them, you kind of have to dig for them. So remember we discussed the uterine horns. This is the ovary, I will discuss that in a minute. But then if you pull it apart, you'll be able to find the oviduct, which is a long tubular structure.
The oviduct is also known as fallopian tubes, and each reproductive tract has two. It connects the uterine horns to the ovaries. It transports the sperm and the oocyte through smooth muscle contractions. So when the ovary releases an oocyte, it manipulates it through the oviduct into the uterine horn. Our next structure also has two of them in each reproductive tract. These are known as the ovaries. The ovaries are actually controlled by two hormones that are produced in your brain from the pituitary gland. These hormones are follicle stimulating hormone, also known as FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, also known as LH. These ovaries have many functions during their lifespan. These produce their own hormones known as estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is a hormone that regulates the estrus cycle. And progesterone prepares the uterus for pregnancy. While pregnant, it maintains the pregnancy in the uterine body. These ovaries are also in charge of gamete production. They develop, mature, and ovulate oocytes, also known as eggs. When a cow is pregnant, the fetus develops in an amniotic sac. You might have seen this in movies or something. It's a big ball full of fluid that the baby kind of floats around in. And that amniotic sac is actually attached to the uterine body or in, within a uterine horn. I'll show you. So when a mama cow is bred, on the mama's side, she has these things develop within her uterus called a car uncle. And they're these big, sort of like a Velcro, that develop within her uterus. And within the amniotic sac, we have, these are called cotyledons. These big quarter-sized structures. When the amniotic sac is within the uterus, these Velcro essentially together, like as so. This keeps the baby safe within the uterine and helps prevent it from bouncing around too much. When they're velcroed together, that's called a placentome. So when getting these two reproductive tracts, I noticed one of them looked very odd. So when I was digging around in it, I noticed that that reproductive tract had previously been pregnant. But whenever I received the tract, it was cut from the cervix upward. So I received all the bottom half of the tract but not the uterus or the uterine body, ovaries or oviduct. Let me show you. So you can see the tract has been cut off at the cervix, right here. And it looks very strange with all of these big pods in them. What could these be? Well, these are actually very unique. These are what we call a car uncle. You only see these on a bred cow or a bred heifer. These develop when the amniotic sac, which holds the fetus inside the uterus, is attached to the side. So the, this is part of the amniotic sac from the bred cow or heifer. And you see these very unique, about quarter sized structures across it. These are known as a cotyledon. Now the importance of these two structures is that the amniotic sac is attached to the side of the uterus through these structures. When put together, it is very similar to Velcro. They are intertwined. 
and once they are intertwined in a normal pregnancy, together they are called a placentome.